Have you ever thought about how professional penetration testers and ethical hackers find vulnerabilities in web applications and how they perform any test? If yes, then this video is definitely for you. In this brief tutorial, I will show you how to start using Burp Suite, one of the best tools used for penetration tests. It supports a wide range of functionality. However, in this video, we will go over the necessary basics to help you start penetration testing. Burp Suite is already installed on Kali. So, open the menu, choose the Web Application Analysis category, and then Burp Suite. After launching, you will be offered to read a standard agreement. Just scroll down and confirm. Since we don't have any projects, we leave it as is and click on Next. Here, we don't change anything either, and click on Start Burp. The program has several tabs for conducting various types of testing. Let's start with the Proxy tab. There are also other tabs here, but we are interested in the first and last tabs, namely Intercept and Options. To start, click on the Intercept is on button. I will explain later why this is necessary. The Burp Suite program itself is a proxy interceptor positioned between your browser and the web server. When you visit a website and browse its pages, all the traffic goes through Burp Suite. The program analyzes data, builds the structure of the site, and can also scan it. Additionally, with this program, you can intercept certain data and modify it in a way that allows you to compromise a remote server. Some web developers use client-side protection methods, meaning they use JavaScript to prevent the entry of forbidden characters or data and send them to the server. However, with the help of proxy interceptors, you can modify the data you need within the program itself, not the browser, and no client-side protection can prevent you. To intercept traffic, you need to configure your browser to use a proxy server. By default, Burp Suite listens on port 8080, but you can change these settings if, for some reason, you do not want to use port 8080. To do this, go to the Options tab. Here you can see that the port is already set, as well as the IP address. Currently, localhost is configured, meaning both the program and the browser are on the same computer. Leave everything as is and set up the proxy server in the browser. We will return to the proxy tab later. Now let's consider the proxy setting in a browser. Just open the Preferences option, and at the very bottom open the Network Settings option, and configure the required settings. Now, let's try opening any page on the educational web server and simply browse and explore any application. Let's see what we have in Burp Suite. Switch to the Target tab. And on the left side, you see the IP address of the server itself. If you click on the arrow to the left of the address, a list of applications we accessed will be revealed. On the right, links that were visited are displayed. At the bottom, there are HTTP requests and responses. As you can see, Burp Suite has automatically built the site structure, and now we can visually see the requests and how they are sent to the server, as well as files, link structures, transmitted parameters, and how the server reacts to all of this. This information is valuable for conducting tests such as command or code injection, SQL and HTML injections, and many others. Keep in mind that in the Community Edition, Burp Suite constructs the site structure only in passive mode. This means you explore the site yourself and follow links, and the program simply organizes and arranges the information. In active mode, the program independently explores the site and even finds hidden links and data that an ordinary user is unlikely to discover. However, this feature is only available in the paid version. Now let's switch to the Proxy tab. Here we will try to intercept the required HTTP request and experiment with it. But first, let's switch to another application. Here enter the login and password, but let's not log in yet. Again, go back to Burp Suite. And this time, turn on the interceptor. That is, as soon as we send a request from the browser, Burp Suite will intercept it and wait for our actions. 
Before this, it was operating in transparent mode or, in other words, as a pass-through proxy server. Now click on Login. Immediately, Burp Suite takes focus, and we see that very request. The application uses the POST method to send data, and at the bottom, we see the transmitted data, namely the login and password. With this request, we can do anything we want. For example, let's change the password and set test instead of bug. By clicking the forward button, the modified request will be sent to the server. By clicking the drop button, it will be deleted. And here's what we see on the website page. In some situations, we need to send a certain request to the server several times and then analyze the response received from it. For example, when considering this application, it would be quite inconvenient to switch between Burp Suite and the browser every time, send and modify requests. Therefore, we intercept the required request, and then we will experiment with it right in Burp Suite. Enter the login and password again. Now click on the action button and select the send a repeater option. Note that the repeater tab changed its color, indicating that user action is expected in it. Here we can modify the request parameters and monitor the server's response in the right window, eliminating the need for constant switching between the browser and the program. Now let's consider a slightly different situation. Let's imagine that we don't know the password to log into a website. We have a list of possible passwords that we can manually enter, but this would take a lot of time and be extremely inconvenient. Again, Burp Suite comes to our rescue. For this, let's return to the proxy tab. Here we will need that specific request. Again, click on the action button. ND select the option send to intruder. Now switch to the intruder tab, and then to positions. Leave the attack type as it is, i.e. Sniper. This type of attack is used when we need to change only one parameter. In our case, it's just the password, as we already know the login. If we didn't know the login either, we could choose Pitchfork or Cluster Bomb as the attack type. Pay attention to the highlighted parameters in the request. They are framed with special symbols at the front and back. These are called markers, which indicate to the program which parameters will change from request to request. To remove these markers, simply click the clear button on the right. Now highlight our password and assign a marker to it by clicking the Add button. Switch to the Payloads tab. Here we need to specify the list of passwords that we want to test. Leave the Payload Sets section unchanged, but in the Payload Options section, enter the list of possible passwords. You can enter them manually if there are few or simply specify a file. I already have a file with six or eight passwords on my desktop. So, let's try to load the file. In the Options tab, you can specify additional parameters, but for now, we won't change anything and just start the attack. An additional window appears where you can observe what is happening. Pay attention to the server code and packet length. Almost all requests are the same except one. Let's look at it. Here, we sent the password bug. And here is the server response. Additionally, the code starting with 3 indicates redirection. That is, after successful authorization, there is a redirection to another page. Here, we conducted a simplified online password attack. Similarly, you can use Intruder for other more complex attacks. Let's consider another useful feature that will come in handy for you. Switch to the Decoder tab. Here, you can encode or decode characters using various encoding methods. But why is this necessary? The thing is, in HTTP, various encoding methods can be applied to represent data. The most common one is URL encoding. This is when you see percentages and other symbols in the browser's address bar. In your testing, you will also need to input various commands. Most web applications and servers can understand them, but some characters may need to be encoded, such as spaces, colons, quotes, and others. For example, let's see how a space would look. 
Recognize the combination? Now let's try a semicolon. In the same way, you can also decode characters. Various encoding methods are also used to bypass filters on the server side. For example, a very popular XSS attack involves using JavaScript code in the URL. Let's try the simplest code. Burp Suite is a useful and essential tool for conducting penetration testing and vulnerability analysis on web servers. I hope you enjoyed the video.